Playoff time, playoff match number two. It's Team Ash again. They moved through the gauntlet. They defeated the first opponent, took down Inting for Ruby, who are now out of the tournament, and move on to the next boss. Boss number two. Boss number two is go next. And whoever wins this series, this best of five, moves, of course, to the next stage where they will face off against Chili Mountain. Yeah, there's a couple more teams to beat if you want to make it to the offline event out of the eight teams that participated in the Masters Clash regular season. Three are already qualified. 30k is qualified. The Harders and the Donuts are both qualified too. And we are determining the fourth team to join them at the offline event in Paris on the 10th and 11th. If you guys want to have more information, you can go to mastersclash.eu. You can simply just Google for Masters Clash uh, Heroes of the Storm if you can't find it directly through the URL. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, with all of that said and done, Maldrick Pass is the first map of all of this. And we're gonna find out if Team Arthurs or Team Ash can now come through and take the second opponent down. I mean, honestly, they fought the entire time with the uh, with Go Next, like a back and forth battle. And right now, I would say that both of the teams are more or less evenly matched, depending on who has a good day, who has a bad day. And this is now a chance to go straight in and yeah, <laughs> decide the series in your favor. Make me the 3-0, 3-1. Move on to the next round, face off against Chili Mountain and preserve your chances to go to the offline event. Now the loser obviously is gonna be out of the tournament, so keep that in mind. Uh, the bans in maps with Tomb of the Spider Queen was banned and Sky Temple were both banned, so those are out of the map pool now. And well, with that we have Ural May taken out, Tog as a first pick. By the way, talking about maps, there's always like questions coming through every now and then. What about Hanamura? What about Warhead? What about like Black Hearts? Guys, all of these maps are pretty much trash. So uh, when it comes to when it comes to competitive, at least. So in most of the events that you'll watch, they are just like straight up banned out. There's always like one or two bad maps that have to be picked to make it like a proper number that you can work with. So uh, some tournaments will have Garden of Terror in the map pool. Some tournaments maybe will have like Warhead or whatnot. Another one is going to have all drag. It depends a little bit on the player. So at the end of the day, influence a lot of these decisions. But there are maps that are just absolutely not played in the competitive scene at all. Black Hearts, Haunted Mines, Hanamura. All of these maps are pretty bad and horrible for competitive. Would be nice if Blizzard at some point would fix them, but for the time being, you're never gonna see those. So it's a pretty standard map pool where you have like maybe like one or two maps that are gonna switch in and out a bit. Um, Braxis even comes to mind there too, even though that's more like an accepted map at this point, just simply because, you know, we only have so many maps to go around. Um, which, by the way, also brings us to another thing that always pops up in the YouTube comments over here, and that is like, ah, oh, we need new content, we need new maps. The last thing we need in this game are new maps. Last thing. We have so many garbage maps. If they want to do anything with maps, fix the garbage maps first. But already, the general Heroes of the Storm player base is so bad when it comes to knowing how objectives work, how they are timed, how you play the map. We don't need more maps. We need the maps that are there just like being fixed a little bit and maybe even some tutorials from Blizzard within the client where they explain it. I mean, how many people do you know even on the Masters level that are not really able to bait a punish on Infernal Shrines over the wall? One example, and you can give plenty of examples on any other map. Either way, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. So I just wanted to cover this topic because it always pops up. In the game itself, we now have Anubarak taken with Chromie. So the engage is there with a follow-up on the stun. On top of that, we already got Muradin and Leoric on the other side. Here for Aldrich Pass. Dwarf can jump around a little bit. Got some Storm Bolts connected. Stukov can follow up with a Lurking Arm. I want a little bit more damage from Zelia though. Kloster is Zelia's account and ah, Zero with the Vikings! Look at that, the Vikings and Karazim, I like it. Bit unexpected to be honest. Didn't expect them to uh, drop the Vikings into this one, but I like it. So, let's see what they can do here. And well, what Zelia is going to play against this. He played Zeratul in a couple of the other games that we've seen already. Maybe a chance that he's going to go Viking hunting today. But either way, good setup. Illidan, yes! <laughs> Feel the hatred, baby! No Zeratul, but we get an Illidan. That's a win in my book. So, Aldrich Pass, map number one in the best of five series here at the playoffs for the Master Slash. Let's jump right into it, everyone. Game on! It will be an interesting one. We're gonna have that four man, and I gotta say that the Vikings player has to keep his wits together. <laughs> 
So, we got Wit on the Lost Viking, Skynox on Karazim, Death Knight on Chromie. Good start into the series, right? Everybody already rolling their eyes. Mission accomplished. Oh, yeah, baby. Zero on Hogger, and we got Blade on Anubara. Kicking us off with game number one on the right side of the map. We got Team Ash with Renella on Stukov, Kloster, aka Zelia on Illidan, Morenas on Leoric with the Austin's Renewal on level one. Bishops is playing Cassia and Denado on Muradin. Okay, so on level one. Immolation! Where's my unending hatred? Feel the hatred of 10,000 Storm League games. <laughs> okay, so either way, it's going to be kind of fun to see what exactly he is going to be able to pull off with all of that. I want to <laughs> Do we get the hunt, for example? Are they going to go for the pseudo global? The map is big enough that you can really pull that off. A bit of a focus straight into Olaf from the get go. Uh, Olaf gets specked. We got the Iron Fists, of course, coming in. And Anubara gets already wrecked. Yeah, it's a good start for Team Ash. I mean, they won already three maps today, so there's that. At the same time, Illidan at the top is trying to do his thing against the Vikings here. He's already getting some extra pressure out. And Illidan is, of course, always a risk to run up against. If you keep him alone on the lane or keep anybody there that cannot really control him, the problem that you're going to run into eventually is that he will just simply rip your structures apart. And that is a big, big issue. Now, when you're looking at the lineup for Go Next, they have mainly Anubarak as a stun source. And when you're dealing with Illidan, you want to have CC. Now, there's always that misconception in especially lower leagues that you will find where people think that against someone like Illidan, you need to have a lot of blinds. And this honestly gets you more in trouble than it does solve your problem. So more so than anything else, if you're up against Illidan, what you want is CC. You want to have stuns. You want to have maybe Bright with the Polymorph. Anything along those lines. And right now, the blue team only has Anubarak. And, well, he can bring plenty of stuns to the table. Of course, there's also a chance to come through with a good cocoon later on. But it will be a bit tricky. And besides that, we're also having the endless stacking from uh, Cassia. And, yeah, there's another kill. <laughs> I told you that despite the fact that Go Next finished the season in rank 6 and Team Ash finished it in 7th place, they have been pretty much on eye level. And there have been a lot of problems for Team Ash throughout the season. I mean, they changed the lane up how many times? Three times. Some players were like kicked and they came back. The captain moved out. They moved someone else in. So there was a lot of fluctuation and it made it pretty difficult for them from one week to another to really bring in consistent performance. And now it seems they stabilized a bit. So go next needs to be careful here. The early game at least is not going in their favor. They lost already two heroes. It's a big deal. It's half a level that you're behind. Nothing really to write home about yet. Mommy isn't going to be proud of you for just that. I need to deliver a little bit more. But it's at least a good start. Vikings, of course, being controlled here as best as possible. But you always will end up with a couple of them going down eventually. Uh, as Tillerman said back in the days, everybody is going to lose a Viking uh, now and there. So now with the Storm Bolt built, even uh, with Sledgehammer, he's going to go for the faster completion of the baseline quest. And Illidan is back up on the camp. And of course, the mid lane camp is what most of the teams prioritize the most. Yeah, they are going to try and do exactly that, bishops. Yeah, <laughs> he gets away. Nice, the Juke Master here. And he turns it around and gets a couple of stacks for free. Good job, sitting at 24. Nicely done, my friend. The early level 7 talent is in as well. And there we go. Drain momentum. Surge of light. And the heavy impact. Okay. The Vikings with the spin to win. Uh, channeling the inner Sonya. Yeah, and off we go. I'm a little bit afraid for the blue team. It's not going really their way. Illidan is scaling well into the late game. He's one of the best uh, champs when, on, uh, that when he comes to late game performance. Once that the map opens up, that the distance to safety is increased, he's great. And he's also taking the focus away from uh, Cassia a little bit. And that's actually huge. Because if he can stack, if Bishops can stack without having, getting punished for anything, without having to be afraid of being targeted anytime soon, that's going to be fantastic. On the 7, we're now getting the seeing red. Now, of course they're seeing red, they're playing blue, so they're going to see a lot of red here. <laughs> okay, that was bad even for me. Again, couldn't dodge it. It's your fault, not mine. <clears throat> I blame you. So, 
Two kills against zero. You know, all these ex all these everybody is anticipating the bad puns. So I I'm forced into them, and then I go for puns that are just so bad that is like it's it's horrifying. But again, it's just like the pressure. I know what people expect from me. Either way, bishops. Yeah, Chromi. No, 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 no. Not with the timing here. So yeah, they were not able to get any real damage on the Cassia bishops without a problem. Don't forget that on the last map, on the last series, we had Bishop's heavily target banned. First of all, Hansa was banned out, then we had Cassia later on banned out too. So it got worse and worse and worse. But, yeah. I mean, Anubarag is sitting at six globes now, so he's gonna take a while for to complete the quest. <laughs> yeah, actually locking. That was a pretty nice move against Morena's on his Leo. I like that. They locked him in completely. We had the five and a half minute mark, and Cassia has already 33 stacks, so pretty decent stacking. At that pace, the early game is at least going well. And uh, keep Mirren in mind. With Sledgehammer as your level 4 choice, you want to complete the baseline as quick as you can. Get the cooldown reduction in, get the pierce in, and there's the hunt. Nice. The pseudo global on the big map. I like it. Good stuff. Yeah, uh, Avatar. Plus, in addition to that, they have them now also with the flailing swipe, the big slap. And on the other hand, here comes the shockwave for uh, Hogger. Yeah, now that we're on level 10, we can slowly but steadily start to focus the attention maybe a bit more onto the prisoner camps. Illidan has taken uh, the lane all the way uh, at the bottom of the map, as far away from the camps as possible, so he can global in whenever. Let's see what they can pull off there. Already the attack straight up against Skynox. Needs to be careful that he isn't too far out or he's going to get punished. And Illidan is sitting in the middle. Easy peasy. So, double channel. And there it is. The prisoners. Yeah, we got our own little Shawshank Redemption over here. The prison break is underway. By the way, best movie of all times, in my opinion. Shawshank Redemption is so damn good. If you've never watched that movie, you owe it to yourself. I don't care how old or young you are. And it's like, but it doesn't have any special effects and where are the superheroes? I'm like, I don't give a shit. You have to watch that one. Always a highlight. Always a highlight. Yeah, we've been talking about series the other day a lot and The Wire obviously king. But uh, we talked about that in one of the previous videos. But yeah, when it comes to movies, Shawshank Redemption is just like, oof. Too damn good. Anyways, quest is completed for Mirrodin. They're both now fighting around the camps a little bit. It's just like still that figuring out, is my opponent going to make a move? Do I have a little bit of time here? Can we poke? Is there a kill somewhere? Is there anything that we could do? Nothing happening thus far. But still, Illidan taking the camp again. He's honestly playing more side lane right now, playing the camps. The rest of the team is facing the foreman. But he's dealing well with the Vikings, and that's pretty awesome. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Two kills to zero. Still. Chromie, of course. Chromie is so annoying. I can totally understand that some people dubbed her Sand Hitler. I can totally get that. I mean, honestly. Yeah, there's the one. Punish her. Punish her. Go for it. She enjoys that shit way too much. The palm on Chromie. He survives for now. And they go for Illidan. And they get him! Illidan is down! Uh oh! That is turning against Team Ash. They're trying to go for Chromie after all. And there's the Stormbolt! The kill! And the double! Karazim is dead. Chromie is down too. And that is an easy double kill. Plus also the fort in the middle. Yeah, so nicely done. Illidan is the first one to die as he makes the engage on Chromie happen. Good for him. But now there they have the play. Five kills to one. 13 talent in their hands. One fort is already down. They move straight up to the top. The cavalry, the raiders, are on the way too. So they're coming in and whoo. Oh baby, that momentum train has hit hard. The pain train is coming. And it's hitting the top lane. And <laughs> it's hitting the top lane hard. Down at the bottom on the map. Yeah, there we go. Illidan. Uh, taking care of the Vikings. Oh, yes, that is all three forts down the drain. No chance for them. Yep. That is pretty rough. Five kills to one. One level ahead. All of the forts are down. This one falls as we speak. And that's also decent second again for Cassia. We're, we're talking a lot about stack, but look at Nubarak. He's sitting at 10. That's not really where you want to be. On the other hand, we got Cassia. 49 stacks? You kidding me, baby? We're talking. Oh, yeah. 
Hoga is down at the bottom of the map, gets chased hard by Illidan, but the top lane, that's where the real action happens, because that's where they open up the wall to go for the keep next. Uh, team Ash, damn. Maybe the blue team still has to wake up. They had, of course, the chance to play some warm-up games while Team Ash was playing their actual series earlier. But yeah, please take that wall down. Eliminate Vision. Because now, again, they can't do anything about it, but Go Next is fully aware that the boss is currently being taken. Now, they're not really trying to engage, but you still want to limit Vision as best you can, so take that wall down if possible. And there's that. Now, the double checking. Boss is taken. Keep in mind, there is no counterplay in the sense that Go Next isn't making a move for the bottom of the map to take their own. 60 talents are in. And 28,000 damage for Cassia. Now, Chromie is also sitting at 28k. But they are just taking all the camps now. And they got the level 16. Ooh, that escalated quickly. They sacrificed Zelia's a little. But they got three kills out of it. And the objective. Down here. Seems like the Vikings are going down again. Yeah, that's another one. Bam! And of course, they're going for the double boss now. The blue team can't do anything about it because they have to defend the top side. With the wall already gone, that boss goes straight up for the keep. You can't really lose that. So it's a little bit on free damage. They're only 11 minutes in, but still, resources have to be spent here. And that's allowing Team Ash to go for the double boss play at the bottom of the map. Locking this one easy peasy as well. And the next objective is now also coming up. Again, it's it's a bit of a snowball. So you have to deal with boss number one, your opponent takes boss number two. You deal with boss number two, your opponent has a free shot at the objective. And like so much happening with this now that you can't really kind of play too much. You are down in talent as well. But now here comes at least the level 16 for go next. And with that, they play on even talents at least. But... The camp is already being attacked, and as I mentioned, the boss is moving through the bottom of the map, you gotta deal with it. You gotta slowly take it down, and that allows Renella to go for the channel. So another potential objective for the boys in red. Okay. Tenardo. Uh, crabbing around a little bit over here. Uh, uh, they're not gonna get the entire thing. Illidan, is he gonna hunt in? Are we gonna see the hunt? He's gonna hunt. Yes, there we go. The palm on an Uberak. That monk is on point, but Blade dies anyway. It's the Stormbolt connected. That's the end of him. And now they're just chasing Death Knight. Chromie gets slapped around six days to Sunday. Yeah, and there's the mace to the face. That is an easy double kill. Vikings also getting farmed a bit. Ooh, this game is not going well for Go Next. Yeah, this was definitely not the, hope, uh, the opening that they were hoping for heading into all of it. So now we're looking at nine kills to one. Two level lead! Two levels! Now if this continues and Chili Mountain can start preparing to face off against Team Ash. Now again, it's game number one and they popped out the Vikings, so we're not gonna see the same lineup on map number two, obviously. But that is a strong opening for the red team. A very, very strong opening. And in the playoffs, every single match matters. If you lose this one, you are out. We need to win to advance. Vikings with the ult, the play, and the kill against Dukov. Poga with a big pork, but he dies too. And they are chasing Blade again down here. The ult on Kromi, and Cassia is dead. Oh, ho, ho, the Entomb on the other hand. Woo! And the Raider just moves through it. That Raider didn't give a fuck. Did you see that? He moved through walls. What is this? Ghostbusters? Stormbolt? Ah, that's the end of the Kukaracha. So already, we got the kill against the Nubarak nicely done, and that's also going to be the end of at least one keep. They're most likely going to lose more than that, because Illidan is currently racking the top side. The level 20s are in. That gives us the Buried Alive and the Rockstopper. Yeah, one keep down. Keep number two is also going to get dropped. That's two armor shields taken away from the core. And down at the bottom of the map. I got news for you. This one is not making it either. Every single keep destroyed. Every single one. The big boy plays right now from Team Ash. As they are turning literally the opponent's base to Ash within seconds. And that boss is going to have a hard, hard time. Attacked from every single angle right now. No armor shields. This thing is just getting absolutely murdered. I don't know why they're not ending. Like, I think if they would have just right-clicked that shit, they would have taken it down easy-peasy.
Didn't quite happen for them. Fair enough. They want to play it safe. They're so far ahead. It's... I mean... <laughs> they haven't lost a fort. Guys, they haven't lost a fort. Not even one. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Hogger. That hero is sometimes so dumb. <laughs> All right, Hogger is in. There's the double kill. Two of them murdered and down. The buried alive. The Vikings are getting murdered. Bishops has 87 stacks. Illidan is about to take Chrome down, but the palm is there. Illidan, Celia. He gets Cocoon to go for the rest first. Bishops, run, baby, run. <laughs> Our boy is still stacking, sitting at 96 stacks for his level 1 now. Now, of course, they are going to get murdered here. Leo is also dying. That's the fourth one to fall. But despite the fact that the blue team is all of a sudden picking up kills, it doesn't change that every single lane gets pressured. So how do you come back here? Now, they had to go into the Fury of the Storm with the Vikings. I mean, there's no other choice, honestly, if you're under this much pressure. On top of that, we got the Piercing Sands. But it's, it's tough to recover from this position. Every lane is pushing you right now. This is nearly impossible to come back on. Team Ash is going to be sitting... I mean, the Vikings are trying. But even the Vikings are hard-pressed. I mean, Boss is already moving in. And, yeah, you can try to make a play for Boss. But Morenas is, of course, just ghosting around and sniffing out every single move on the side of go next. Could go for the objective, maybe. Another camp is moving in. It's, it's kind of crazy. It's nearly impossible to lose this. Now... Emphasis on the word nearly. <laughs> it is possible. We've seen it before. It's difficult, but it's possible. So, yeah, the stacks are coming in. And we'll exactly see how much damage at the end of the day Cassia is able to dish out. She's certainly currently sitting at 66,000. 16,000 ahead of the top damage dealer on the blue team side, which is Gromy. And the blue team is really fighting as best they can to push these lanes out a bit. If they can push the lanes out, that's them creating some space for themselves. And once you have that, you have a little bit of time that you can use to maybe invade your opponent's prisoner camp. Make a play there. You have to also cover the bosses, of course. That's another thing to really keep an eye on. Yeah, Illidan is trying. In the middle of the map, they're already active again. Illidan is right now the only one that capitalizes at least a bit potentially on these walls that are still being left behind. But of course, the value out of the vision is kind of neat. And poor, poor Baylock. Poor Baylock. I mean, I feel a little bit sorry for him. So, yeah, Wit is not able to save him. Bot lane pressures. And it's all about just controlling the map. So, here we go. We got 68,000 for Cassia. 97. And the lanes. I mean, this is the best they're ever going to look for go next. At some point, you just have to uh, to go for it. At some point, you just have to decide, all right, boys, let's make a play. And they're trying. But there's the interrupt. Free stacks for Cassia. Bishops is not going to say no to that. This is like, yeah, nice. Channel more, please. Channel more. Totally on board with this. Oh, the snipe and the kill. Leo is down. And they go for Cassia next. Illidan in the back line. Fantastic timeout from Chromie. And here comes the shockwave. Uh-oh. I said it's nearly impossible, remember? They might make it up, and they're trying for the kills. Yes. <laughs> go next with the camp. We're 18 and a half minutes into the game, and go next is trying to make their plays. Now, Illidan and everybody else, they're already on the move. Where? Of course, to the boss. They're going to try right here. In the meantime, the mid lane gets pressured, so they're dealing with that. And Nuburak is going to sniff out what's happening at the bottom of the map. Blade is on the way. He might be a little bit late to all of this. That's 50%. And, of course, Leo knows what's up. But, yeah, they're trying to go for him. Uh-oh, this is clutch. This is really clutch. They have to give up. This is getting stolen. Oh, they took it! The end tomb! <laughs> awesome! They actually took the boss. And the core is already under attack. The Vikings are coming in. They need big kills now. They need big kills. The objective is already taken. Oh my god. No, no! Oh, Chromie is dead. The palm was awesome from Skynox. Saved at least one, but not Chromie. Hogger is down. Cassia falls to 88,000 damage for her. Skynox is trying to dash out. Illidan is on the chase. And yeah, this is a total disaster. 
That's the kill. Zelia is hunting them quite literally. Goes for Blade and there is just no escape for the Cockroach. And of course the core... Ah, well, actually, he just walks away. The core, on the other hand, that one can't... It can run a little bit, but not far enough to get away from them. So that is game number one, 100%. Good stacking for Cassia, 117. This is game. Team Ash takes the lead in the best of five series against Go Next on Aldrek Pass. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Game number two! The Viking strategy didn't quite work out on Aldrek Pass and Team Ash was able to lock in two objectives and gain a lot of momentum. I mean, the first wave of objectives obliterated every single fort that the opponent had, the second one took down every single keep, and I think then they also took it a bit easier, because if you have every single obliterator on this map, it's pretty tough for your opponent to ever get a foothold again. Now, to be fair, the blue team tried what they could, right? But yeah, it just wasn't enough. So, as it stands, Team Ash is ahead. They've been able to take the lead in the series. And, of course, that means that the blue team has to step it up a little bit. They had the map choice. No, it's actually not true. <laughs> they went for first pick. And the red team, Team Ash, decided that it's time for Dragonshire again. Quite likely that they're going to try to go for Rexa once more. They really like to play that one. So where's the King of Dragonshire going to appear here? First we got a couple of the supports banned out, Utha and Lucio. Utha, another good example of a hero that in the Korean meta, in the Chinese meta, is completely ignored. Which is kind of funny because they were always one of the regions, you know, that would combo a Divine Shield Utha with Greymane even in the days when the European teams and the North American teams wouldn't really like think about that too much, wouldn't really value that a lot but right now we have Uther banned picked in tons and tons of games in the western scene and the Koreans they just don't like that at all they just ignore him completely another example as I pointed out earlier is Rexa and he gets banned right here because with first pick potential for the blue team Team Ash is a little bit afraid that he gets taken away from them so yeah but yeah the Korean tournament was kind of interesting now to be fair they don't have a lot of competition over there the level of play in Korea has definitely fallen but it's still interesting to see different metas. And it would be awesome to see them collide one day again if we have offline finals. But I don't think that's really going to happen anytime soon. Either way, as it stands, Stukov gets taken as the first pick. That's something that both of the regions can definitely agree on. We have Anubarak and Urel. That is a bit of an old school Korean setup. We saw it especially at the Eastern Clash before HTC was killed by a blizzard. Uh, yeah, was played tons. But with that, it's a good start. Dragonshire, of course, also a map where you want to have a bit of mobility just in general between lanes and also towards the objective. So you can jump in. And May takes that away. Pass Tychus. Damn time. Oh, yeah. So, Tychus, our boy, is coming in. The Renegade. And for the bands, what do we still have? <laughs> We still have bishops, but I don't think we've seen a single Hanzo game from him today. No, I actually don't think so. And he was banned in a couple of the matches, but not in all of them. Let's see if he gets it at some point. And here comes the Zul ban. Against Wit, you always have to think about Zul a bit too. But they already have May. Will you go for it? Eh, you never know. And again, that side lane clear can be annoying. If you have Zul just moving from lane to lane, you always have to meet the rotation. And if eventually they overwhelm you with just lane pressure, that's also a problem. But what do you ban out? Do you ban out something like Sylvanas? Do you get rid of Hanzo? Do you just like go for something? Eh, they go for Sylph. Sylvanas gets banned away. Okay, so understandable. But I still want to see what we're going to get from especially Zelia, of course, but also the rest of the team. When we're talking about someone like Bishops, I would like to see that Hanzo at some point. So that we can see these arrows again and the engages that he usually brings with them are pretty awesome. Yeah, his Junkrat in the previous series wasn't bad either. A lot of good plays from him. So after Anubarak stuns a target out, you can follow up with Junkrat and really just like put the target out of position. And Karazim can follow up with a 7-sided strike on that. So good setup for them too. And leaves. Leave Zelia in that Nick position, you know, as a bit of an X factor where you can really react to what your opponent is taking. So that's what they're trying to do here. Yeah, and talking about this opponent, what's the offlaner going to be like? We have Urel against the Haka, and Zeratul gets taken. Okay, so Zeratul is not an option any longer for our boy Zelia. But how are they reacting to this? 
Now you got a May, you got Dehaka, and you get Zeratul on the other side. And you gotta deal with that somehow. More CC is always welcome. They don't have a lot. They have mainly an Uberak. They find themselves in a... I mean, a little bit similar of a position as the uh, blue team in the last game, considering the amount of CC mainly. So, yeah, we get Kerrigan! The Queen of Blades, everyone. Kerrigan is in. Game number two, Dragonshire. We have Team Ash against Go next at the Masters Clash Playoffs. Let's go. Game number two, map number two, a little bit more macro heavy. That's maybe not quite fair. We had, we had Vikings on the last map, but obviously it's mainly a macro attempt because it's a big map. All drag pass is always kind of huge. The approach to Dragonshire is a little bit different. You have to control three spots on the map if you want to get the objective, which is also a bit more difficult than uh, just simply going for like one focus point on the map as we're seeing on uh, all track pass the macro aspects on all track are mostly stemming from its size and so you can set side lane pressure up too anyways as we're going into the game we got kelvin on tigers we currently have wit playing may blade is playing the haka on the side lane and zero is the one that we have to focus on a little bit with his zara tool everything that happens here will hinge on him a bit if he can get the kill for example against junker on the other side that would be a great start for them into these fights and he is going to try but they will attempt to control him as best they can and they have a lot of chase potential at least around heroes like karazim for example that come in with a quick dash and nubra could also throw a stun or two out to really deal with him here and time will tell if he is able to do that now skynox on uh, stukov is going to support them with some additional stuns and there's a lot of slows here too i mean you got some dcc from the haka you got may of course with everything that she brings to the table and if stukov is playing it out well he's going to have the chance to just follow up on that with a lurking arm every single time and really set kills up for tigers in particular so i need to keep an eye on him also this is about something that we're going to see on the level four very likely a change if you watch the korean tournament that was just recently played out then uh, yeah it was the level four where master assassin was usually the choice or the weapon of choice not really happening in the european scene all that much now with all of that said and done on the right side of the map team ash with the 1-0 lead in the series is running the show with renella on karazim so they're going to try for the isolation here to allow karazim to get the seven-sided strike connected as morenas is playing urel creating a bit of space for the back line we got zelia on his close stack account on kerrigan denado on anubarak and bishops absolutely integral to this composition is playing junkrat so if you get stuns connected from anubarak kerrigan and junkrat is following up with a mine then you can just get the target even deeper onto your side and then isolate it from the rest of the pack and just take it down karazim's seven-sided strike is going to play a big role there of course as well whenever that comes to pass and we're back to business. So apparently a bit of an issue on uh, one side where some of the players had some problems with Discord and as it's used as a voice tool, you obviously got to fix that. Now, we have already right from the start, Zero heading again into that greater cleave. It's something that we've seen from him already a few times. So going more so into a cleave build, at least with the synergy on level 16, if not even the level four talent, so that they can go for the extra AOE. And of course that enables you also with more wave clear. You're in a position where you can just try and take these waves down much faster and apply some lane pressure. So that's something to think about. Keep in mind that they really like to play that style in the first place. It's one of the reasons why, for example, Zul was banned out. Because Wit has been doing that a lot. I mean, either way, we have a little brawl in the middle. And both of the teams are apparently confident that they can walk away with the first kill. But Zelia's carry again. That's where most people are looking at immediately. Yeah, okay. For, <laughs> okay. That was definitely. Hit. I mean, Zelia's drunk. <laughs> that went the completely wrong way. So, yeah, that didn't work out. Anyways, both of the teams without a kill just yet. And as I say it, Tigers at the bot lane gets eliminated. And are we starting game number two really in the same fashion that the first game started? It seems like it. A double kill for Team Ash. They start it off with a bang. You gotta give it to them. They carry the momentum right now. And this is a really good look in the early game at least. Of course, early game kills, they don't give you the biggest lead in experience. Their death timers are very, very low. It's not like you can super capitalize on them. But it, again, it gives you a bit of an upper hand. You're starting to call the shots in the game. You have a little bit of a time frame where you control the map and can do what you want. So we'll see what they can accomplish in the long run with it. But that's a great start. That's exactly where you want to be at now. So the first objective is also up. 
And that means that both of them are trying to get the uh, Dragonite, but it's really the red team that is calling the shots now. So Team Ash with an opportunity to maybe even collapse into the mid lane and take it. At the top, Urel was still trying to buy more time for them, but uh, the cavalry is already here. And, well, does, does Morena just want to go up against all these champs all at the top lane? All of those heroes just moving in, trying to take him down? The answer is, of course, easy. Exactly. Why would he? Of course he doesn't want to do that. It's a bad idea to do that, so no, 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 no. He moved back, called over some help, sent an SOS up, and the smoke signals reached the rest of the team, and now they start to collapse into another big team fight topside. Uh, bottom of the map, Bishops is also getting attacked here, and Zero and him, they are going to see a lot of each other in this game. Because that's literally what he has to do. And with all of this happening, Karazim could take it. Look at him. Comes in. Baldy goes to town. I like it. Mid lane. Represent, baby. There we go. Hashtag team no hair. So, with all... <laughs> yeah, we're going to work on the punting a little bit. That time was slightly off. And yeah, they're burning it down way too quickly. That Dragonite needs to save himself for later on. It allows, of course, the rest of the team to push the lanes. But yeah, you gotta do a little bit more than that. Topside, Morena's, Urel and Kerrigan. The combo's already there. Dragonite is still like, well, I wanna do something. Moves in. Got like two Dragon's Breath off of uh, so, and it was a good job from Go Next to really burn it down as quickly as they did. So for now, there's it. Oh my god. <laughs> Zera, who? Yeah, no chance. Zera tool it down. Great combo from Kerrigan. I mean, boy, she sniffed that out. Instant. Extremely well done again. And that's an early level 7 talent at 3 kills to 0. And they're looking for even more. So I like it. If they can steal the camp away, for example, or just simply run that level, uh, that level 7 advantage, it would be kind of nice for them. We have the Seeker in the dark. Uh, also, Nubarak with the better barbs now. And yeah, let's see. I'm a little bit afraid. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bit afraid that Go Next is going to get murdered here. This is not going well, and if they at some point start tilting, just imagine if you are... Like, you fought throughout the entire season, you know, to finally get ahead of Team Ash, get into a better position in the standings, you manage, and then you head into the series, you lose the first map, and then game number two, you're also getting obliterated early on. If you lose here, they really need to dig deep to come back and try and turn us around. Digging deep enough to really bring a game or a best of five back after losing two maps is insanely difficult. Not impossible, we've seen it before. We've seen it in this tournament. But yeah, it's a chore. This is a good step though. Denado, yeah, there it is. They kill, they got it, okay. This is a good step. This is exactly what they gotta do. And they might, nah. They can't get bishops, but that was a good kill. Now, Anubarak will be back. So there is still a chance to fight back into this. But yeah, if... if if Team Ash can break them, maybe crush them in the mid-game, they have a good chance to take this with a 3-0 even. But from the perspective of Go Next, they just need to make sure that they're not tilting. There needs to be someone in the team that really has just like, you know, the composure to sit there and like, okay boys, let's take a deep breath and just reset. But anyways, it's game number two. It isn't over yet by any means. And now the blue team is starting to hunt and I like that. So they are all of a sudden attempting to be much more active on the map. And they're going for the kill. And they're going to take him down. That's the kill against Urel. Just after they already got one. The attempt to go for the Dragonite in the middle already failed. And that's two kills that he just locked in in the last minute. And that puts them into a really nice position where they will grab level 10. They also have a chance to retake some of these shrines. While the mid lane is still protected. So good on them. Level 10 abilities with the Might of the Nerazim once more. We got the Ultralis. Seven sided strike. And the rocket ride. Yeah. Wall. There it is. And we've seen it actually a few times too. Wall into Rocket Ride. Nice drop by Wade on the trade. Oh, and a new Barak. That sun didn't connect. That is unfortunate with a big F. And same time. Oh, Denado. Okay. The Haka. Yeah, he wants that drag again, right? And there's Skynox. The dash. Dash in, dash out. And it buys enough time for Urel to retake the top at the bottom of the map. That's actually a zero that is all of a sudden under pressure. But the attack against Carrigan is coming in too. The Ultralisk is out. Good save from Junkrat. But that fight might not be over just yet. Because Denado is thinking about it. He wants to re-engage. But Carrigan apparently is jumping out of the fight. And everybody agrees that they're going to live to fight another day. 
13,000 damage for Tychus. And 8,000 damage for the top damage dealer on the side of Team Ash. Quite the gap. Pretty big one. Now, you're looking over towards the stacks on Tychus. And he's sitting at 39 for the early game. That's not too bad. If you stack well early on, then you're going to reap the benefits as the game continues. And it's the blue team all of a sudden that is controlling all these shrines. So yeah, they definitely found their rhythm again. The early game might have been a bit of a setback, but they found their rhythm here for sure. Donato gets attacked again. Okay, topside camps are there. Urel is fighting her little one versus one against Blade the entire time. She's playing hide and seek around that thingy. Pedestal or whatever that is. And yeah. T kills the three, come on. We're still waiting for that battle between Zelia and Zaratul. Zero as he comes in. Also, everybody seems to be just jumping on the Haka and Blade. Yeah, his spider senses are tingling. And they should. Everybody was on the way to him for a moment. But they're still looking at Zaratul. There's the stun. And nobody believed. Oh, Cocoon to save the Dragonite. Yeah. Off we go. Dragonite number two for Team Ash. This time they just need to get more out of it. <laughs> the last one was a bit of a fail. I mean, not really. Again, even if it gets burned down, the resources have to be committed by the opponent's team. But they didn't get a whole lot out of it. It was very early too. So, uh, yeah, here we have it. Red team is already starting to move back in. Level 13, good for them. Really nice move. And at the bottom of the map, the siege trains are taken down. The Dragonite is pretty much just hiding. Zelia is just sitting there like, guys, I can't really do a whole lot. They have multiple heroes over here dealing with me. If you can do some damage, then I'll just keep them here. And Chrysalis for Carrigan is going to be super important. Okay. Uh -huh. 13 versus 13 now. And the Dragonite finally is able to make his way straight into the middle. Yeah, Tigus gets an ass kicking as at least the Fountain gets taken down. So good for them. Fountain eliminated. That's a little bit of the lane sustain gone. May gets attacked at the bottom. Uh, that's maybe going for the Haka here. They're still looking for kills. They're trying to break through the wall too. Can't quite though. And Urel is of course rotating towards the top in the meantime. Anyway, it's all about experience at the end of the day. You want to catch the experience here? Oh, nice hit. That was good damage. Oh my god. Junkrat with a big hit against two of them. Zero and Kelvin. Both dropped rather low there. With a bit of a follow-up, that could have maybe even been a kill. Can you imagine Carrigan being nearby for that one? Whew. That would have been... Talking about Carrigan. Ah, the seven-sided. That was an X-ray. An X-ray bullet right there. Now, seven-sided strike in zero. If they would have connected that stun a bit better, then he would have been dead for sure. But in the meantime, another combo. And with even with a good trade, doesn't stand a chance. Because Urel follows up on it. And does the trick. Nice. Yeah, that's four kills to two. And of course, now you can go for the bottom camp. One more camp up on the map. You got the additional uh, hero on the map. And also, the opponent doesn't have a tank right now. Nothing they can do about it. So here we go. Kill against Karig. Uh, sorry, not kill against Karig. And Karig is completing the quest. That's already nice. We got the 60 stacks for Tigers. And maybe now, with the help of the camp and with May still being out of commission, they can finally go down to the bottom of the map and take it down. So, yeah. Hobbity up. <laughs> yeah, big push against Zelia. But at least, at least the fountain is gone. Now again, I've been harping over and over again, especially when casting the amateur scene, how important it is to take the opponent's fountain down. On a map like this, it can decide pretty much the entire mid game. Because now that there's no fountain any longer, given that this is very likely going to be taken too, we are going... Ah, well, now that Blade is here, they might save it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, all the sustain is gone in the mid lane. So you don't have a lot of uh, sustains the fountain at the bottom, at the top shrine. You have nothing at the middle. So if your opponent can just continue fighting there and then go back and tap the fountain, they will always have an advantage. So it might not necessarily lead to you winning anything here, but it gives you a huge leg up. And that's all that matters for now. And they are already going for another one. And this time everything beautifully connects here. Well done. A great kill against May. I mean, that one was awesome. Skynox paying attention. Well played by him. Bishops could have been uh, the end of him here. Now at the top with the level 16 now kicking in for go next as well. And the synergy coming together for Zaratul in particular. They're trying to go for Morenas. So far not possible. The double connect. And I guess that's going to be another Dragonite. Yep, Renella is at it. 
Botling gets defended, and it's time for another Dragonite. It is a new Barak who went for it. Yeah, level 16 talents already. Epic enter is in. A new Barak, he epically entered the Dragonite for now. Didn't need level 16 talent for that, but it fits. So, yeah, I'll take it. Two kills to five. And off we go. Finally need to take one of the forts down. The one at the bot lane is, by the way, also under pressure. That's why May is currently rotating back down. <laughs> it's kind of funny that they're... I don't want to say struggle. And I'm still really struggling around it. But every single time they got the Dragonite, it doesn't re I mean, it's not really a situation where you're like, Oh my god, this is insanely dangerous for the opponent. The defensive setup for Go Next is pretty strong. It's pretty powerful. So, yeah, you can't really argue that. But here we have it. The Ice Wall without a real follow-up, though. The Haka came in. And they sniffed him out immediately. He wanted to go for the Lick, and Urel is just like, Nope! Not happening. But the first fort is down, and they did some serious damage to the one at the bottom of the map. Of course, the walls are all opened up. And there's the chance. To maybe go for Carrigan. No, gets healed out. Alright, Tychus gets kicked away. And he is dashing out. Easy peasy. Oh, nice! But the stun is there. Blade. Yeah, that could have been the play. If they follow up on this. If he's not able to stun him out, maybe. It's a level lead, a level advantage for Team Ash. And they are in a pretty decent spot now. The bottom four is under continuous pressure. The one at the top lane also. And they can go for the next camp. But to be fair, one good team fight for go next and maybe an objective. And all of this can turn on a dime. The hero that struggles the most for the blue team is the frontliner. May has died three times now. She's Wit has definitely some trouble here. Gets targeted heavily and with the seven-sided strike kicking in. This is of course pretty difficult. Ice wall, damn. Yeah, they really went for that one, didn't they? Now the bottom forward is taking some damage. But it's not falling yet. And the Haka, he has the global. That's of course the big trump card in their sleeves. If Gonex can play the late game, open the map up a little bit, that global might be what wins them the game. It's definitely possible. But for now, their bot lane is under more pressure. And once the fort is down, the catapults will periodically spawn for you on that lane too. And they are going for the Arca again, and he's not escaping. No. No, 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 no. Not even with the tunneling claws, baby. You can try, you're not gonna make it. They ganked up on you hard. I mean, boy. That was quite a bit of overkill. Stop it. He has a family. Well, two kills to six. And they are closing in on level 20. I really like that the blue team went for the counter play at the bottom of the map and taking the camp. But they might pay the price for it now. Because they are trapped. Look at Sukov. Sukov was like, oh shit. And is trying to run away here. But yeah. I'm sorry, my friend. You're not going to make it. There's Odin. Zeratul is the first one to fall. One down, two down. Yeah, I don't know. That is not looking good. That camp, I'm not sure if it was worth it. Level 20s are in. They go for the fort. That's an easy kill on this one. Now, they still got a death. But boy, did we have quite the fight here. I mean, look at this. They get caught down there. And then the attack is coming in. And it is just doing way too much work. First, we get the kill against Zeratul. Stuko falls. And with all of them down, again, you just can fall back. And the red team, this time, they're capitalizing massively on it. They take the entire bottom wall down. They open the keep up. They're even ignoring the camp here. They don't really have to deal with it because the minion waves are coming in the entire time. And it, of course, means another Dragonite gets taken too. That was a big play. That was a big, big win. Going for the camp was kind of nice, but they just took too much time. When they realized that the Haka would die, they just said, okay, guys, let's at least take the camp at the bottom of the map. And Team Ash reacted instantly after they got the kill against Blade. They moved down to the bottom of the map, and Go Next wasn't fast enough. So they lose not only two heroes, but also another chance to go for the Dragonite. And now the fort is down. The keep is down. And it's a level 20 advantage. Now the keep is down, and the Dragonite is still sitting at 68%. The question is, what are you going to do with it? Are you trying to core? Are you looking for the kill? Are you just posturing? Are you maybe attempting to get some damage in the mid lane? Yeah. They are trying to go for core. They're saying, guys, let's nibble at it. Let's nibble, nibble, nibble just a little bit and see what we can do. Tiger's already kicked away. I don't really think they can go for it. They won't even scratch the core. Ah, they will do a little bit of damage here, I suppose, if they really focus on it now. But nah, they're falling back already. They don't want to overstep. They're just looking for opportunities. Chrysalis is out. And Ubrak is diving away. There's a level 20. And they're trying to get out here. 
All right, a little bit of a slow. Yeah, no damage on the core. They were hoping for a kill. They couldn't get it. Decent defense by go next. Still behind. Two fours lost, one keep lost. But they got the level 20. So they got the shatter. And we got the contagion plus the twilight falls. Yeah, 28,000 damage against 33,000 on the top damage dealers for the team. Six kills ahead. And cams are getting taken again. And of course, carry get his key. Already checking that out. Chunk red, right, old bastard. It's grenade after grenade. But then again, there it is. The attack against Urel. She gets the ult out. Well done. Blade. Shadow is through. Connects with one of them. And Odin is also committed to. Bot lane, that's the problem. There's a camp pushing through the bottom of the map. And there's catapults slowly amassing too. So, who goes down to the bottom of the map? While well, the fight at the top is still raging on. That's the big question. Those camps are going to be up at the core in just a second. Maybe a kill even. Blade gets attacked. Zaratul is trying to win it for the team. And the rocket right. And the connect with Blade. Who has to get the hell out of there. The core is under attack by the way. And Blade is dead. Blade is dead. The core gets attacked. At least in a second. Now they have time to send someone back. Since of course the fight is now over. With the Haka, the hopes and dreams of winning that battle also were shattered. And there is another objective coming up in 15 seconds. Oh, that hurts. That really hurts now. Team Ash with such a good setup. They took the camp that's going to attack the fort. They're taking with Morena's the top shrine. Junkrat is at the bottom. 18 and a half minutes in. No chance for the blue team to wait for the Haka here. They maybe can contest it and just buy some time. They're not even trying to defend the top fort. Why would they? And Carrigan goes for the Dragonite. Dragonite about to be taken. Top side under pressure. They're moving down to the bottom. The Haka still not here. This could be the 2-0. This could just be the 2-0 right here. It's going to be a tough defense for the blue team. Really tough defense. Zero's trying. Zeratul is looking for a victim. Can't find one right now. They're playing it slow. The wall already didn't connect. That's one cooldown down the drain. And they're trying to zone Zelia away. Big red button. Seven-sided. Already out. The kill against May. May is down. And here comes the rocket right straight to the face of the Haka. Down he goes. And that's going to be the same fate that the core will share in just another second. Nicely done. Team Ash with another victory here in the playoffs. These guys are on fire right now. Team Ash with a 2-0 against Go Next in the best of five. Don't know what to tell you guys. It is a 2-0 already. So Team Ash has put Go Next with a back to the wall. The blue team need to win three in a row now if they want to turn this around. And good luck with that. That's not going to be easy. Impossible? Definitely not. But it's not going to be easy at all. So now we're looking at Battlefield of Eternity. Our third map. Potentially the last one. Uther gets immediately banned out too. And yeah. It's going to be interesting. I did not... Uh, honestly, I didn't really see this getting to a th potential 3-0 or whatever. I thought that the two teams here would really fight it out like clutch. And could still happen. Now, the winner of this moves on to meet Chili Mountain in the next round of the playoffs. The loser is out and can't make it to Paris anymore. But that is definitely... It's going to be a tough battle. Now, there's a lot of aggressive plays and control that we're seeing from Team Ash that I really, really like. And they wanted to mainly team... Well, team fights in good rotations. They immediately just analyzed the situation in the late game. They got the kill against the Haka. They were like, hey, we saw them going down to the bot camp. They went there, took it, and from there on it snowballed completely. Even before that, they already took a bit of a lead in the game and made some nice moves around the kills that they got and the objectives. They just could never really capitalize on it. But with the death timers this high in the late game, no problem for them at all. Now, we got Uther and also Anubarak uh, immediately banned out. <laughs> yeah, no Anubarak engages anymore. Problem, of course, is if you still want to play it with a similar style, you can go for Varian too. And here comes the Chromie ban, the Lucio ban. And our first big on Battlefield, it is Stukov. Yeah, the Admiral is in again. I mean, for good reason. Stukov is highly prioritized by most teams. Really good hero, great follow-up for him, and insta-picks, damn. 
Still no Hanzo play from uh, Bishops. Instead, he's all on the Cassia train today. I mean, nice for him. So yeah, Cassia is in. We got Urel on top of that. You really like to play through that hero too. So Urel press Cassia is already in. We have at the same time now the next few picks coming uh, for the blue team. And they really got to step it up here. So what's the damage against the Immortal going to be like? Are they trying with the... Va Ooh! Tyriel! Look at you! Alter Freund und Kupferstecher. What's up? Tyriel and Jimmy. Now Jimmy, of course, you can still play with... I mean, you can go lone talent. There's a lot in, with Jimmy that you can just do generally. And we've seen a couple of times after the patch, after the rework. But Tyriel is not that often a pick. So that's an interesting one. We've seen a couple of comps that were not necessarily meme comps, but Tyrell went actually into judgment and was trying to follow up. Uh, people were following up with the stun, with damage, you get a kill. Not what I expect here. It's more so a sanctification play, I assume, that we're going to see. But that pick, especially in that position, I did not see coming. So let's see what we're going to get with it. First, we have my F band. <laughs> yeah. Good one. If you have a Tyrell against you and he gets a sanctification out, Mayev is just gonna murder you. She is gonna wreck you hard. Karazim. Oh, it's getting annihilated. Yeah, okay. So, good stuff. Yeah, I'm a little bit interested to see what they're gonna do with Tyrell because if you're getting rid of Karazim, Karazim has later on the triple dash for the triple cleanse. Are you trying to get rid of some of the cleanses? So that there's no chance for... Uh, then not play Judgment. Nah. Nah. All right, Malfurion, he has Nature's Cure. Yeah, Malfurion is actually one of the biggest differences between the European meta or the Western meta and the, um, the Korean one. I, I pointed a couple out earlier. But Malfurion is an insta-ban in Korea. Insta. I think he made it through the entire Korea tournament into three games and was immediately picked as the first pick. And they always won. They love Malfurion. Okay, there's Genji. And Sonya. Judgment into leap, into X strike. Bam! Insta kill. Yeah. <laughs> Unlikely, but I'll, I would take it. If they want to go out with a bang, that's the way to do it. So we got the last pick coming in. That is, once again, Zelia, who can now chip in for the team. The X-Factor pick, what are we getting from them? Aggressive lineup, no doubt, from uh, the red, from the blue team. And now, Team Ash with Li Ming. Oh yeah, Zelia and Li Ming, ladies and gentlemen. Battlefield of Eternity, game number three, the 2-0 lead in the playoffs for Team Ash as they're trying to lock in the victory to advance to the next round and face off against Chili Mountain. Go next against Team Ash, Battlefield of Eternity. Yeah, we're gonna end a real battlefield for this one. Kelvin on Genji. Ah, one Shimada already in. I was waiting for Hanzo to pop up at some point in the hands of bishops, but instead we're getting Genji. Wit on Tyriel, Skynox on Stukov, Zero on Reyna. Heading on level one, straight into the Exterminator. For the extra damage against the Immortal, we got Blade on Sonya and on the right side of the map. With quite the performance today. Bishops on Cassia, Kloster aka Zelia on Liming, Renella on Malfurion, Dinado on May, and Morenas is playing Urel. Call them butter because they're on a roll. Team Ash popping off. This is game number six in a row that they're playing, and if they lock it in, then they would be undefeated here today and move on to the next round of the playoffs. Yeah, they are definitely someone. Uh, several of the players here put on the, the big boy pants today. That's for certain. He transfer on level one. We're gonna get the Emerald Dreams, of course, and there is the Force Armor on level one for leaving. At the top lane, our one versus one is gonna pop off here with Morenas and Blade, but the main action is happening at the bottom of the map, and I am totally ready for it. Reverse sweep or a three-zero. Well, beginning of a reverse sweep. Or a quick 3-0. What are we gonna get? Well, first of all, we're seeing Genji rotate towards the top, and I hope for our top laner that the team called that out, that he's missing, because if not, then Ural is in trouble. But she's already falling back, so she knows for sure. And Genji plus Sonya, they're just simply trying to take the camp. But damn, this down here? Don't tell me we're starting this off again with another double kill or kill against T uh, Go Next. Look at this wall. This thing is pretty much gone. Like, Team Ash is crapping all over that. 
They need a janitor to clean this shit up. Now, one tower dead. I mean, hello! We're 1 minute and 30 seconds in the game. You're not supposed to do this much damage to it. Ooh. Now, talking about doing this much damage, there is Kelvin. Finally coming back down. Now, to be fair, there is, of course, a little bit of a difference when we're talking about the setup. Now, what's different? Well, the difference is that the blue team did take the top camp and the red team didn't take the one at the bottom. And now Sonya rotates down two to make this a four versus five, which means that they are going to take both camps. But to be blunt, I think that's totally worth it. Given how much... Oh my god, and they're even taking it away from them, aren't they? Sonya is forced to go back to the top because Urel pushed the lane out, so she needs to retreat or they're going to lose experience. And that allows them to take the camp. So now they drop more or less the entire wall. They took all the experience that was available and they stole the camp too. They might not have gotten a kill this time, but this is still a real solid opening for Team Ash. That's a good one. It's a lot of structural damage early on in the game. Deciding the game? Nah. But still decent. Now down here, Denado is already moving south. Oh, we got the Dominance as well. Okay, can be aggressive around that. We see a lot of Turum for it these days, of course. But here, Dominance is kicking in. And they have been very dominant today. That's definitely true. But, yeah. Everybody's just sniffing out where the opponent is. The Immortal is popping down just now. And this is where we're going to see which team is taking the lead in this game. Objective number one. Who's going to go for it? Uh, a little bit of easy damage attempts against uh, Wits Tyriel. Got to defend, trying, down at the bottom of the map. Yeah, here we go. And of course, in the meantime, yeah, there it is. The Immortal gets attacked. Both of the teams are now moving in for it, and we keep Jimmy in mind. Yeah, this is Jimmy. An exterminator is coming through for them. So it's a 50-50 halftime show that we're seeing. Solidly done. Down here, of course, still Morenas defending against the camp. Has to push it farther in. That's going to help the team out. But everybody else is just going on the attack. And the red team is trying to defend here. Oh, look at Renella. No, Genji, he wants him. But he doesn't get him. Instead, he needs healing. And he doesn't get any. Down he goes. Genji is dead, but they want the objective. Oh, they're losing Stukov. Yeah. They take the Immortal, but they lose one. They lose two. Wait, he needs mana. No, he doesn't. All right, he got it out. But, whoo, they get the objective, but the kills, they still came through. Double kill for Team Ash. And now, of course, they need to deal with the Immortal as quickly as they can before the entire five man is back up at the top, if they even head it that way. Sonya with a spin to win or spin to safety in this case. But, yeah, well done. This Immortal is not going to do too much. Those kills were super important. If they don't get the kills, it's a different story. Then there will be quite a bit of damage wall would fall maybe even the fort but this is the best that you can do now you should still take it down <laughs> okay apparently they don't care about this one uh, at least not about the gate they want to collapse onto the bot lane in an attempt to get a kill there but they couldn't 26 stacks now for Cassia she had an amazing progress in the first team fight but I think she got 22 but ever since then things have calmed down a little bit more for her with level 7, we now got the Augmented Guardian. And we got the Swift Retribution. Ah, and Kelvin, he's trying. I mean, Kelvin is doing whatever he can with Genji now. To get the damage connected. Alright, Urel is in. Azalea too. It's tight, guys. Close game. Closest one of them so far. Bishops! Woo. Okay. Dodges out of most of it. But the blue team is bringing it back. They might have lost two heroes and two maps. But at least now, they are fighting back heavily. And I mean, there's a lot on the line now. You need to win three in a row if you want to have a chance to go up against Chili Mountain. Okay. And the, the early level 10, it's a small gap. Shouldn't make a big difference. But it's always dangerous. If you have an opponent that is hitting level 10 before you and you know it and it's around an objective, there's always a chance that someone is a bit out of position and gets punished for it or that you have to give up the halftime show. And already Jimmy is in trouble. Yeah, there's the root and Terry literally eating a bullet for him. I mean, Li Ming came in with a combo and Terry eats it, goes full Bruno Mars, catches the grenade, and that keeps Jimmy alive. So yeah, you owe the man a beer, my friend. Or two. For sure. 
But also, nice plays from Team Ash, just setting these attacks up, you know, so that it is real tricky for Gonex to keep everybody alive. But they got a squishy setup, but an aggressive one boot. And Wit has been doing well so far. Now, here's the level 10 standards up to now. Yeah, oh, 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 Blade, Blade. No, he's dead. Blade is dead, just disappears. And now they get the kill with level 10. This is exactly what I talked about. It's this tiny window, but it's all that they needed. They get the kill. Now they get the halftime show. And just when that's over, Gonex will have get their own heroic ability and they will get Sonya back. Maybe not even that. They're going to lose more than the halftime show, aren't they? It's Judgment, yes! <laughs> Woo! Judgment, ladies! Yep, they're going for it. They're going for it. Yeah, we already talked about it a bit after they banned Karazim. The triple, the triple cleanse after 16. Always a threat if you're going into insta kill combos and there's the leap. Extra, I, I mean, again, we called it. We talked about it. If you go out with this, you go out with a bang. Look where Kelvin is. They're waiting for it. They're looking for Malfurion. They want Malfurion. Yeah, judgment into leap, into X strike, and of course Dukov also with the lurking arm. They are going full in on it. Look at how careful the red team is playing. Look how they are positioning. They know exactly what's going on. Look at Renella. He's all the way in the back. He looked at those ults and he's like, fuck that shit. I'm out of here, boys. Like, you can do whatever you want at the front. I'm going to stay as far away as I possibly can. If I'm in range, I am dead. You know it. I know it. They know it. Not happening. So here comes the attack. They go for Li Ming. X strike. And no, she's alive. Zelia's alive. The leap. Whoa. And the attack. And Blade is alive. <laughs> you had 18 hit points, I think. 18. But they take the objective. God, this is this is so well played by Team Ash right now. Playing it so slow, really just staying in range of the Immortal, poke out the damage slowly, but not risking anything, even suffering damage at the top because they know they have to fight this one. Super, super careful approach from them. They have so many heroes that would be dead if they're being hit here. So very, very well done. Now, of course, they need to be super careful because, well, top side. Now, of course, Sonya still at the bottom of the map. But he has the attack already, and this is this is a bit bonkers. This could be so bananas as the game continues. If Gonex just gets one good engage, it could turn so many things around here. Get a kill, follow up with a second, chase them down, you know? Yeah, well, there's the slide. Okay. No, 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 Sonya, not again! Cheeriel comes in the back, but that's not enough. They killed Sonya once more. They're farming Blade at this point. This is the third time I think that he died. They're trying to go for zero. They're trying to go for Jimmy. They can't get the kill against him, but they have four kills to zero right now. And 52 stacks also for Cassia. That's on top of that. 52 stacks on Cassia. Woo! We are in for one hell of a game here. Even if it's a clean victory for Team Ash, they will have to play this so carefully in every single big engage and potential fight. If they can pull that one off, I mean, that's a totally different style from what they played so far. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, again, you look at Go Next and you know exactly what they're trying to do. But, of course, Team Ash knows it as well. And they are giving them no opportunities. And that is not easy. If you're, if you're playing that setup, they're giving them no opportunities. Now, of course, some individual positioning mistakes on the blue team side also contribute. If you can exploit them, but again, it takes a lot. You need to, first of all, make sure that you don't make any positional mistakes. You need to instantly exploit any of those on the other side. And that is not easy. Might look a little bit easier if you're full vision and everything, but believe me, if you're in the driver's seat here, that's a different story. Now, virulent reaction is adding to the threat level. That's another one. So that's there as well. And with all of that, top side, Morena is going to move back. Going to do his thing. Uh, same time, Bishops, Cloister, they're all sitting tight. Renella, they're going for the camp, of course. Same talents. Four kills to zero, same talents. Level lead, yes. But it's not going to play make a big difference for the objective now. And yeah, they're looking for it. It's all about the position of Tyrael and Sonya now. You need to know where they are. You need to have vision. Urel needs to scout it out. May needs to scout it out. Everybody else needs to be shielded. 
Renella, look at where he is. Far away as possible. Yeah. Don't allow them to get anywhere. Same time. Here's the leap. Okay. Leap is in. There's the judgment. And immediately, immediately, May with the ice wall shutting it down. The follow up from Elfirian. Here comes the play. They're trying to go for Blade again. He's on the run, but that's the kill. And they want more. They want more. They want wit. And they might get him. The slows are there. The fort is low. Another great play from Team Ash. The second Terriel comes in. May has the ice wall right there. They're not even trying to target other heroes. Denado is not giving it like he's not giving a damn about where exactly the other heroes are. The second he sees the engage coming, he's putting the ice wall on his teammates. Because he knows that's where they're headed. And if the ice wall doesn't catch anybody, at least you keep your boys safe. And that's all that matters. The second he sees the Tyrell engage, the second he hears anything from Sonya, bam, ice wall. It's all about just saving the targets now. Morena's trying to run away here too. Yeah. Playing it safe again. They won the halftime. But it's not over yet. It's not over yet. Five versus five. We're back on the map. 33,000. Ults are coming back online. Judgment. Two seconds. Malfurion. Still waiting. Tyrael already sniffing it out. And it's... Oh, there it is! The ice wall, but she moved away! The blink ruined it! The ice wall was there on the target, but Li Ming moved out, Tyrael followed, and there's the kill! Right here! Right there! Kill number one for them. And now, of course, they want more. They hope for bishops. Renella, right away with his own ult. Bottom of the map, Ural is trying to defend. Has to take this one down. Now up at the top, they're still fighting. There's the next engage. They're trying to poke it down slowly, but it looks like the blue team might win this one. Yeah, they're trying for it again. And this is looking good. Much better for them now. Yeah, now of course, the problem with all of this is that they're now up against level 16 talents. That is the bad thing about it. Five kills to one, but that one kill was important. And here we go. We got level 16 talents that will make it much easier for Team Ash to defend. It's a sh small shield to begin with. But... Can they get the kill? Oh, bishops. Oh, ho, ho, ho. buddy. You are playing with fire, my friend, here. Wow. And I guess the fort is going to fall. And that's not the only one. Uh, the only thing. They're going down to the bottom of the map. They're taking fort number two. One kill. One kill is all they needed. It was five kills to zero. One kill was all they needed to take two of the forts down. They are ahead. Blue team hasn't lost a single fort yet. Structurally, they are ahead. Behind in kills, they're behind in experience. But structurally speaking, they have taken the lead. And now they're also taking another kill. Urel goes down. And yep, that's exactly what we talked about. Right from the beginning when they picked their level 10 abilities. You got to be so careful. And one single move can ruin the game for you. They dodge the ice wall. It's a 5 versus 4. And the red team just takes it. Yeah, there's the older Malfurion. They're taking it. They're trying to do it somehow. Maybe buy some time for the top so that the fort falls too. Relieves the catapult pressure a little bit. Take down the fountain. But yeah, this is nasty. They're trying to go for Genji. Calvin is having none of it. Moves out right away. Two kills to five. And they're catching up in experience as well now. Yeah, even more. Even further. Another camp getting attacked here. Denado's trying to get out. Urel, she's coming back too. Top lane, Ford is gonna fall. They're gonna get at least this one. <laughs> yep. Yep, this is. <laughs> Told you, this is gonna be spicy one way or another. If you go for that YOLO setup, talking YOLO, there we go. They go for Denado, but the follow up of Stukov was not there in time. So that's judgment down. That's a one-minute cooldown that just blew. One-minute cooldown down the drain. And that might give another lead for Team Ash on the Immortal. Now, of course, there's still camps up. And they go for it. Perfect timing. Objective is up. And let's go, ladies. Let's see what they can do here. Chase it away. Try to maybe take it. Yeah. Get the damage in first. Blade. Going for the defense. Top side is going to go for keep, so you have to deal with it. Someone needs to go to the top lane of the blue team and uh, have a look there. Yeah. Zelia. 
Gets out again. Survives. Oh, the leap. He dodged out on it. And Genji is dead already. Blade went deep and gets punished. And there it is. The double kill. Zelia was so close. Blade was leaping in and just didn't get it. Zelia moved away. Now they get the halftime show. Likely the entire objective. Morenas is defending the bot lane so that the keep doesn't get attacked. The top side is also being defended. And they are trying to go for this one. Ice wall against Stukov. Goodbye. It was nice knowing you, buddy. <laughs> Gets blown to pieces. Holy shit. Someone just got crapped on. Damn. We're going to look at that again. Look at this one. So first, they're checking this out. Denado's sitting there, like ice ball, and then look at this. Just insta, insta gone. <laughs> Gets blown away. No chance for him. 82 stacks by now for Cassia. And well, that's an immortal. That is that is a bastard of an immortal. Ooh, look at that shield. Look at it. That's nearly 100%. So they can let it push to the bot lane and just focus at the top. And if you go next, you're looking at this and you're like, well, either way, we're going to lose ground. Are they follow up down to the bottom? Do they pressure up top? Nah, they're going down there. They're going to go straight down to the bottom of the map. That, there's level 20. Oh, Storm Talents and Big Immortal. Blade, he wants to leap. Do they check this one? Yeah. Oh, he didn't see it. What? He just hit in behind that in time. Damn! Alright, now the chance. Blade comes in from the back. Renella is immediately on the move. Immediately. Right away he says like, yeah, that ain't happening. Okay, there's the push. They know where Blade is. They know where Blade is. Their keep is in so much trouble now. 95 stacks for Cassia. Here they go. They try to go for Blade. Push him out a little bit. Keep is gonna fall. 100%. Keep is gonna fall. There's no way saving this one. Question is, can you save the core? That's the big one. Can you save that core? Leap up. Judgment up. Where's the play? When are they making it? It's too late. Stukov is down, but Cassia dies too. Cassia is dead, but the Immortal is still active, and it's gonna go for the core now. Look at Kelvin. Gay solo. Genji! Denado! The kill! There it is! This might just be game! Oh, the core is taking damage, but I don't know if they can end. Tyrael is dead. The explosion! He wants Denado, but he doesn't get him. 76%. Can they take the core down? Even without Cassia? That's the question. They get the kill against Sonya. And that just has to be it. That's the end. The end. Team Ash. What is happening with these guys today? Oh my god. Six games in a row. They took down ending for Ruby. Five man wipe as they end it. They take go next down. And they advance in the playoffs to the next round. To face off against Chili Mountain. What a setup by these boys. They are on fire. Damn. Really nicely done. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on Patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to Patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.